Good evening, everyone. It is a special day. We have another edition of Friday Night Frenzy. We just have to take a moment of silence because this is the last day of the regular season for the playoffs. So let's all collect ourselves, dry those tears, and let's get right into the highlights. Starting us off, we have the Westwood Patriots taking a quick road trip to take on the Nagani Miners. First quarter action, and it's going to be Emily Nelson of Westwood who gets the scoring scar with a nice little step back and gets the Patriots on the board. Myers possession now, and looking for their first field goal in the game, and the senior Morgan Carlson slashes inside and gets the Myers a three-point lead. Now back on the offense for Myers, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Carlson driving and scoring again. Myers lead is now five. Westwood now on a scoring drought, but fighting hard as Nelson gets the tough bank shot to fall to make it a one possession game and still in the first and it's going to be Amelia Pamaki who gets the floor to go and makes the Miners lead five points once again. Now into the second quarter and after an early Patriots run who cuts one Alyssa Hill who didn't play at all in the first quarter due to the senior night immediately hits the three and she was making her presence felt as she gets the offensive board and the putback and Hill finishes with a double double as the Miners finish the regular season with the win 42 to 29. And taking a look at some more of our girls' basketball scores, the Escanaba Eskimos, they finished the season with the win over the Bark River Harris Broncos, 60-47, and the Chassel Panthers, they beat the Lakes, 48-25. Keep the highlights rolling, Connor. All right, why not? We got the Bessemer Speed Girls going on the road to take on the Lawrence Purple Horns. First Speed Girls possession and turns into a fast break opportunity for the Purple Horns. And a nice little dish here to your teammate getting that assist in the column and a wide open shot for the bucket. Next Speed Girls possession and the Horns, they were swarming like them as they forced another turnover, another fast break, and no passing necessary this time with another fast break bucket for the for Lawrence. Bessemer, they need to score. Otherwise, the Hornets, they are going to run them out of the building. And they're going to start to go to work, this time in the post. And they're going to feed it inside. And a nice little turnaround floater. And the Speed Girls, they start to settle down a little bit. But maybe they just got a little bit too relaxed because loose ball is ripped away. And guess what? Another fast break with a nice looking assist there. And another bucket. Even I can make a couple of these buckets with how fast they and getting the turnovers. Besmer possession this time. They're the ones taken to the to the hole with a tough runner. Now Purple Hornets actually taking their time on this possession. Let me catch my breath. But another bucket. And the Purple Hornets cut away with the win 66 to 33. And we're going to take a look at one more girls score. We had the Rudyard Bulldogs pulling out a close one against the St. Ignace Saints, 51 to 47. And now we're going to go over to the boys' side as the Dollar Bay Blue Bolts. They dominate the Ironwood Red Devils, 81 to 45. Also the first home win, I've noticed. And the Forest Park Trojans, they get the win over the North Dickinson Nordics, 53 to 37. And we're going to switch on over the Newberry Indians. They had an impressive looking win. I saw them play against Munising. This was a much more impressive outing as they beat the Trojans 74 to 57. And the Schoolcraft Eagles, they just keep on winning as they beat the Lapeer Lightning 58 to 46. And our last little bit, the Chassel Panthers, they again win on the boys' side as well, getting the sweep of the Lakes. The boys winning 79 to 65. And we got plenty more coming up to you. We didn't forget about the guys because we got a great matchup coming. That was a close one all the way. Stick around for Friday Night Frenzy because we got more. Did we collect ourselves? Are we all good? Are we ready to finally finish out the regular season with the last Friday night frenzy before the playoffs? I am, and I hope you all are too, because we are back at it. This time we're back in Nagani for the boys' matchup, again with the Myers taking on the Patriots. And Nagani, they're hoping for the same outcome as their girls' team. Myers' possession. And look at the big man dishing with the court vision, finding Jake Nick Jacobetti for the layup, and the Miners get on the scoreboard first. Patriots turn offense, and their stars came to play as Zachary Beckman raises up and ties it with the jumper. Patriots ball again, and it's their other star, Zachary. Carlson, that is, as he drains the triple, and Westwood takes the lead. Nagani, though, they were going shot 
for shot with the Patriots early as Gerald Johnson does not hesitate and switches his own triple to tie the game back up. Now, this is some great team ball as they break the press, and Johnson, he is the benefactor of the bucket, and it looks pretty easy, and the Myers, they're trying to pull away. But look at this crazy sequence. Off the miss, one offensive rebound, another miss, another offensive rebound, and the bucket, and the foul. And this game was a great end to the season as the Miners come out on top 59-41. to and taking a look at our last bit of boys' high school scores, the North Central Jets get the home win as they beat the Superior Central Cougars 70-46. to And Cardinale, they dominate on their home court, being the mid-pen Wolverines 72-21. to So we take our last little bit. Petoskey, they won via forfeit to Sault Ste. Marie. So the Northmen, they get the win. And the St. Ignace Saints, they're closing out with the row win over the Rudyard Bulldogs. Unfortunately, the boys couldn't quite close it out. But let's finish off our night the same way we started with some girls basketball and some nice inside-out action from the Hancock Bulldogs that leaves a wide-open triple against a struggling Mountaineers team. Bulldogs position again, and this time passing outside and just going to work inside with a tough layup that falls for Hancock. Mountaineers, though, not going away. Off a quick pass and an equally quick release from the Mountaineers and a swish on the three by Iron Mountain. Hancock, though, they were not rattled no matter what Iron Mountain did. As a nice pass inside, gets the bucket and the foul for Hancock. They would make the free throw. But the Mountaineers must have seen that Westwood play because off the missed free throw, they get the offensive rebound. Almost turn the ball over, but they feed it inside. And a tough contested layup that is partially blocked, get the rebound again, and they finally get it to fall. But the Bulldogs, we think they come out on top, but be sure to give us the score. Follow me at, at Sturgill Sports, DM me. We want to show all our teams some love, so be sure to let us know. And taking our last look of scores of the regular season. Let's just soak it all in as the Ontonagon Gladiators, they beat the Wakefield Cardinals 55-34. to And the Munising Mustangs girls team, they beat the Norway Knights 38-27. to And our final score of the regular season Friday Night Frenzy, the Calumet Copper Queens dominate the Gwen Mile Towners on the road, beating them by 40 points, 61-21. to I want to thank everyone so much for being here for Friday Night Frenzy for the past couple weeks. I want to congratulate all the teams who won and we got through the season and I am equally excited for the postseason. I cannot wait for some special postseason editions of Friday Night Frenzy. For the next time, I'm Connor Sturgill. I hope you all have a safe, wonderful night and a great weekend. We'll see you next time on Friday Night Frenzy.